Hmm, that's as blunt as a witch's t- Ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to Make, Repair, Recycle, where, in this episode and short series, we're going to look at refurbishing these poor abandoned machines. A few months back, a good friend of mine messaged me. He works for a guy who owns a farm, and in one of his barns were these two poor machines. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here are barn finds. Abandoned for quite a few years, these machines had been left unloved, covered in a mixture of interesting substances. They are in desperate need of renovating, and underneath are some actually perfectly good and operating machines. These would have ended up being weighed in for scrap, but with a little bit of hard work, these could be rejuvenated into working equipment ready to turn ideas into reality. To get these back into operation, I'm going to start with cleaning off the steel tables. Now, as you can see, there's quite a lot of rust and crud stuck to these surfaces. My technique here is to use abrasive pads and wet and dry paper to gently clean the surfaces of rust and crud. That, and a lot of elbow grease, should start to get these back into working condition. The first step is to wash and scrape the top surface to remove the dust and the guano stuck to the top. A scrub with hot soapy water loosens the dirt and the glass scraper can lift the gunk off. After that, the real elbow grease starts. I'm starting with a red scotch bright pad. This does quite a lot of the heavy rust removal with the addition of a bit of WD-40. You can see on the front edge where I've already started the huge difference between the clean and the rusty side. And if you listen very closely, one here of the <coughs> ASMR fans, you can hear the difference between the rusty side and the smooth side I've already done. And as you can see, it's really rather disgusting. After a few minutes of scrubbing, I give the table a wipe down to see how the process is going and if there's any areas to focus on. If you're going to try and do this, I suggest you use a clean cloth every time. The oily rusty residue needs wiping off and recycling the same rag just spreads it all around. After that is 240 grit wet and dry paper with a bit more oil as lubrication. Using a solid fat surface, in this case an off coat of timber, helps apply the pressure evenly to the table and prevent any high spots appearing. Lots more effort put in here, but as this was during a cold snap and it was minus two outside, it certainly keeps you warm. I wipe the table down regularly to keep an eye on progress, and as you can see, the bright steel underneath is starting to come through. To get across the middle of the table, the blade had to come out, which was a good thing really, as it was totally useless and blunt and due to be replaced. There really is something quite deeply satisfying about scrubbing something up like this, cutting through the dirt, grime and rust and finding that the table is actually pretty good underneath. No big dents, cracks, gouges and it's pretty flat too.
This whole process seemed to work pretty well, but if you've used something else or a different technique, let me know, because I'd be interested in the comments to hear how other people have done this. You will also see a difference in the colour of the material coming off the table, from a lovely diarrhea brown to a dark grey and then a black. This shows that we're getting the dirt off and starting to get to the steel underneath. And after a couple of hours scrubbing, a pair of very greasy brown hands and enough dirty tissues to make even a teenage boy blush, the bandsaw table is looking much better. A quick wipe down with a cloth and some degreaser, and it's almost ready to use. Fitting a new blade at the extortionate cost of £12 from Axe Minister Tools means we're ready to start cutting. There's still more to come with this. The blade alignment guides are missing from beneath the table, and the upper ones aren't much cop either, so they're going to need to be replaced. The table could have done with another scrub down, and perhaps a, invest in a new sheet of 240 wet and dry paper, and it does need some sort of fence. But for now, it works, and that's the main thing. I went through the same process with the planar thicknesser, and that came up a treat as well. The blades need resharpening, but I've got a plan for that in a future video. So after a few hours hard graft with nothing more than wet and dry paper, these machines have been given a new lease of life. And if you like this kind of thing, consider giving this a thumbs up and subscribing, and try out the video that's on screen now. Thanks for watching, see you next time.